So, coming into this game, I thought that James Neal and Patrick Hornvis would just dominate and get all the goals. But man, was I wrong. The Penguins dominated this game from start to finish. It was the most complete effort of the season. James Neal, granted, would have had two goals except he hit two posts, and Flurry was very happy for that. But he also had an effect on the game in a negative way for the Predators. He took a dumb penalty in the offensive zone, which he did so, so many times last season. It resulted in a Penguins power play and it allowed them to get their third goal of the game, their second goal on the power play. So, coming into this game, the narrative was, oh my god, Sidney Crosby is pointless in two games. Oh my god, the Penguins aren't doing well. What's going to happen? Well, Sidney Crosby proved all of his doubters wrong by scoring three points. He had a hand in all three goals, and he was dominant. He looked like the Sidney Crosby that we know. He now has 12 points in just seven games. That is almost two points per game, just about 1.8 points per game. Now, of course, he probably won't sustain that because even Crosby cannot produce at that level every night. But that is the highest current points per game in the league right now. He's tied for fourth in the league in points, but it's only because he's played less games. And apparently he hasn't even bought into the system yet. Neither has Malkin, who also is over a point per game this season and has 10 points in seven games a point in every single game so far the only player in the league to accomplish that pretty amazing for players who haven't bought into the system yet. if you don't know what i'm talking about it's a reference to an article written by dijen kokovic formerly of pittsburgh tribune review who now has his own website dk on sports um online which you can subscribe to and he basically said the players haven't bought into the system yet if they haven't bought into the system yet i'd like to see when they do buy into the system because they look outstanding right now this is the team that i was expecting these other this is the crosby this is the malkin that we have all been dying to see and oh, when those guys are on man i don't think they're two better players in the league certainly not more fun to watch anyways so Penguins win this game, 3-0. Um, they finally get going on the power play. They're now up to 40% for the year. First in the league by far, not even close. They probably won't sustain that, but it's still good to see that even despite the loss of James Neal and some other pres um, players like Matt Niskanen, they're still producing on the power play. They're also producing on the penalty kill, and they now have killed off, I believe, 12 of their last 13 kills, have now moved up to 17th in the league, good for 80%, which is still pretty freaking bad, but there are many teams below them. They're 17th in the league, there's 30 teams in the league, so there's 13 teams below them, so uh, they're not the worst, but they could definitely be better, I'd like to see them get into the top 10 in that regard for sure, but it's coming along, it's getting better nicely. Um... A big reason why the power play and penalty kill has improved is uh, a player by the name of Oli Mata. This is a 20-year-old player, his second season in the league. He looks like a seasoned vet already. He leads all D-men on the team in points with five, but he's already bumped Paul Martin off the second power play unit, and Paul Martin's not really had the best season. Uh, he's now taken his spot with Christian Ehrhoff on that second unit. He is now playing on the first penalty kill unit as of a few games ago and he, with Latang, and he does not look out of place. He looks fantastic out there. Like He's being some of the best players in the league one-on-one. -on -one. Um, he's so calm. He's so poised. Like he, He's not making your typical young player mistakes. Um, he He's probably been with Latang. Like That's been the best penguins d so far probably some of the best in the league while pretending is Latang is not producing offensively like he can he's playing a smart sound defensive game which is something that we've been missing from chris Latang over the years and only matt is producing the offense and they complement each other really really nicely um according to war on ice.com only matt is averaging 20 minutes and 10 seconds of ice time per game up from last season which when he averaged 18 minutes and 46 seconds of ice time per game which um was still top four on the team this season he's fourth on the team in ice time behind only veterans such as Latang, martin and airhoff which makes sense because he's also not getting that top power play time but he's playing on top unit with chris Latang, which is a team that the management had envisioned long term when they drafted Olimata. 
He's been some of the, one of the best possession players on the team. I believe him and Chris Letang are operating about um, high 50, 55, 56 percent, which is incredible, especially for Demon that see the puck a lot. They're playing against the best competition. I would rather see Letang back with Ayerhoff and Mata back with Martin because I think that that would balance things out really well. And it would create a much more evenly ba uh, even balanced top four pairing demon, but they're pretty interchangeable. But I do think that Airhoff and Latang killed it in preseason. I'd like to see my Johnson revert back to that pair. But that will not happen because uh, breaking news yesterday: Only Mata has been playing with a possible cancerous tumor in his thyroid gland for the past three weeks. He's known about this since training camp. He's not told anyone, not even his team. Only the coaches knew. Sidney Crosby is the only player to know. He found out yesterday, um, about 30 minutes before the team did, because he was the captain. Like, that's outstanding. Not only has he uh, played, he's been incredible. He has not missed a step. He had three points in the season opener just after he found out he could possibly have cancer. He's going to play the rest of this week, get surgery next week, and only miss a month. Like, that is outstanding. He's handled this with poise and class. He has not seemed nervous at all. He's just an incredible, incredible young man, and I can't believe he's dealing with this, and he's dealing with it so well, and he's not scared at all, and that's amazing. Um... You know, especially seeing what Latang went through last year, what Lemieux went through. Like, this team has had so much trouble with uh, trouble with staying healthy, especially on the uh, defensive back end. You know, I was talking to someone on Twitter yesterday, and I think the Penguins are cursed. I mean, really, like, did we make a deal with Satan? Like, did, did Craig Patrick say, oh, okay, um, uh, yes, we'll, we'll draft Crosby and Malkin. We want to draft Crosby and Malkin. And Satan say, okay, you can draft Crosby and Malkin. But as a result, your demon are going to be cursed for the next 20 years. You're going to have all the injury luck. Your star player is going to get cancer. Your best defense is going to get a stroke. Oh, and the best player in the world will miss a year and a half due to concussion injuries. Like, seriously, this team is cursed every year. A star is injured every single year. And they just... Man, it's just... It's, it's so so frustrating to always see the players injured but so I, I don't know man I think I think this team's cursed but in all seriousness I wish him well I wish him a speeding recovery and I know he'll do great and he's already played amazing so once they get those removed <coughs> I can't wait to see how much better he plays once it's out anyways I'm sorry again this video is so late I've been really busy that's all for now the penguins are back at it tonight against the New Jersey Devils uh, who uh, look look pretty good this season? And now that they actually have a, a pretty good goal t goalie in Court Schneider, they have good puck possession. They just can't win in the shootout. Uh, it should be a good game. Uh, and then the next game is against LA Hockey Fights Cancer, which is ironic because it's just when Willie Mattis' condition was announced. So it'll be interesting to see which goalie gets tonight and which goalie gets Thursday. I would personally start Grice tonight and um, Flurry on Thursday against the Kings, but. Uh, that's because he's the starter and he's supposedly the better goalie, but uh, that's up for Mike Johnson to, de to decide. Um, either way is fine. So, please click like. If you like this video, click subscribe. If you really like it, tell with all your friends, share everyone, share the joy, and I will see you after the next game tonight when we take on the New Jersey Devils. Thank you for watching. Let's go Penguins!